2019 was to be a year of change and challenge for Summit or Nothing. A year of hiking, wild camping, scrambling and eating. It was a year full of adventure, of extreme weather and glorious views, of hiking in the clouds and above them. A year of hiking with family, with new friends, and old, of seeing new places and new horizons. It was a year of fundraising and a year which saw us gain an incredible 3,000 extra subscribers. It was a year of ups and downs, but mainly ups, a lot of up. In this video, I invite you to join me for a look back at one of the most productive and rewarding years of Summit or Nothing to date, 2019. Don't forget to subscribe if you haven't already and hit that bell to keep up to date with our adventures. And as we head into 2020, I would love to hear from you guys in the comments below as to what was your favorite video of the past year. Morning YouTube. Hello. Trevor here, something or nothing. And Nathan also nothing and something. Back out on Dartmoor. In us by. In us. It started just like any other year for Summit or Nothing, with Nath, Trev and Moby heading out to Dartmoor for more tour bagging, more crossing off the 365 map, more Dartmoor legends. Here behind me is Stephen's grave, another Dartmoor legend and the occasional successful bout of accurate navigation. Could you imagine two years ago, us sitting at a stone wall, looking at the top of a hill, setting a bearing, and then just walk exactly onto that spot? We didn't get up here and search around for it and hunt for it. We just came straight over the top of it. It appeared to be business as usual. That was until it snowed. Our trip to hike the featureless climb up Cosden Beacon in the snow seemed like a good idea at the time. <laughs> there goes Trev, did you catch that? We were tackling it from the opposite side to our previous visit and the hike gained would surely be a great location to take in some stunning snowy vistas. However, this day hike soon became the straw that broke the camel's back. 15 times I've nearly fallen over coming over there, 15 times! It was a spur of the moment outing with no real planning, simply a case of finding somewhere accessible by car and then heading on to the moor. However, being an impromptu hike brought about a fresh set of problems. That's rock the other side, it's going to be slippery mate. Well, why don't you go one way and I'll go the other way and we try and find a way over. Well, there's no point spilling it up, is it? We've reached in past this little century place before. After much deliberation, a little bickering and a fair amount of backtracking, the laborious task of the climb eventually proved too much for Nathan. Well, we got to about 200 metres away. And Nathan's had enough. He said he can't be bothered. I can see the beacon. There it is. This is Cosden Beacon. My legs are like jelly. As I reached the summit alone, it became apparent that the inevitable announcement was not too far around the corner. Hello YouTube, Trevor here, Summit or Nothing. Just here today to do a bit of a, a sort of an announcement video. Nathan has decided that he no longer wants to be part of Summit or Nothing. It was with a heavy heart that I announced Nath's departure from Summit or Nothing, but as had become apparent in the months prior, a busy schedule in his own life and some unrewarding wild camps had played weary on Nath. This is why you don't go camping when they put these extreme weather warnings out. You know, you might think I'm a little bit on the miserable side, and maybe I am, but there was nothing pleasurable about sleeping in here last night. It was clear that the burden of filming our every move seemed to detract from Nath's enjoyment of the outdoors. It was the end of an era. It had been great fun, and we had created some great footage, as well as some amazing memories. It was great to have spent some quality time with a good friend who I otherwise didn't see enough of and I hope that one day he will join me again for some more escapades. I know we will all surely miss the banter. See this? This little fence. Stopped him dead in his tracks. This guy must have gone up now. In the first mouthful, he's all like... <laughs> <laughs> What's going in my mouth? It reminds me of my uncle. <laughs> <laughs> the camaraderie. <laughs> <laughs> <Dick head. laughs> Comedic moaning. Is it the first ever letterbox 
ever, or is it the first letterbox on Dartmoor? I don't know. But somebody was having a laugh on a what a f***ing shit place to put it. But most of all, we will miss Moby. And with that, two became one. With Naif gone, I had to reassess the channel. If anything, Naif's departure gave me a fresh drive to keep the pace up, to keep the momentum rolling in the right direction, and having recently relocated closer to the moor, now was the perfect time to get in some solo wild camping. I had a number of different setups now, and made the most of my new access to the moor. The Lantern 2 would play a key role in my camping videos in the year to come, and would eventually become a contender for my tent of choice. But its maiden voyage back in January was far from ideal. Right, so it's up, it just doesn't look very sturdy. On one occasion, I even managed to get my whole kit under 10 kilograms, which for me was an achievement. I went up to the moors with a tarp shelter, and despite the glorious conditions, it wasn't the most comfortable night. There's uh, this little pole at the back here, just land on my head. It's not strong winds, but it's just constantly flapping, and it's, it's not against me all the time. The wind is whipping in under and through the tarp. Oh. It's gone again. That back pole just won't stay in place. I also finally got out for a midsummer wild camp on the southwest coast path choosing the strenuous and somewhat isolated stretch between Senon and St Ives in Cornwall. It was a great night and a beautiful area to explore, but having to pitch in a farmer's field for a spot of illegal wild camping was far from ideal. Stealth camping in a big white tent. <laughs> I do, I feel like a fugitive. There is nothing like stealth camping in a white tent. But despite making the most of the freedom of camping on my own, I had also begun to arrange getting out and about with some old friends and some new. That is my attempt at roast beef cooked on nothing but the tranja. I was getting tired of eating dehydrated meals and boiling the bags were growing samey. And I was looking for YouTube for ideas when I stumbled across Tom's video. As Soon as I saw a roast dinner being cooked on a tranja stove, I knew that I had to meet this guy and more importantly, have him cook for me. Being the first collaboration since Naif's departure, it felt a little strange for both myself and Tom to start with, but soon we hit it off and felt comfortable and familiar in each other's company. Do you want to give one? Oh, what's that? Kidding. Summit or nothing? Kidding. Oh, what? Yeah, it's an honour. Summit or nothing! <sighs> Sorry. <laughs> he showed me some fantastic food ideas as we explored parts of the moor that was new to both of us. Eventually, we set up camp, enjoyed some more food. What's the tea, Tom? Coconut and spinach dal. How are you getting on with it? Mmm, that was tasty. And kicked back for a tranquil wild camp. Hey, Tom. Yes, Tom? Have you seen the weather forecast? I haven't looked, no. A weather warning in place from the Met Office for the sort of area we're in, expecting to get pretty wet and pretty windy. Well, what did you expect coming out with me camping? We were hit by winds of up to 60 miles an hour. We got obliterated. My tent was flattened and Tom's was mangled. At 5am we decided to call off day two and headed back home defeated. All right, we're all packed up, ready to go. Yeah, pretty oh. epic evening. Just one to remember, isn't it? Undeterred, we managed to reunite a month or so later for another wild camp and hike. We visited the south of Dartmoor now in search of the Broad Falls. It was a route that Tom had designed, so I cannot be held in any way responsible for the god-awful terrain that we were forced to navigate. Don't go in that. <laughs> and luckily for Tom, he faced the worst. That was cold. Where well, are you leading us, mate? Amazing that you're filming, but could you give me a hand? <laughs> <laughs> Four times! After a slow and featureless hike across some of the bleakest area that Darmore had to offer, we finally found our destination. Why would you come here? If it was worth coming here, there'd be a car park. <laughs> it was a bit of a disappointment, an anti-climax after such a gruelling trek, but we did have a great time. We managed to have another good feast. And this is cottage pie. Cottage pie mix. I didn't tell you this over the phone. This is vegan cottage pie mix. So it's dehydrated. I'm off. Tom, that is absolutely handsome. Yeah. However, let it be known, just for the record, that neither Tom's unfortunate route nor the fact that he force fed me vegan food had any bearing on the fact that we haven't been out again. That's just rumour and speculation. 
I also managed to get out for a wild camp with an old friend, Stan, whose real name is James. Today I'm out with my mate Stan, whose real name is James. Do you remember him? Help. You've met him a couple of times. Stan had featured on the Summit Enough in Timeline twice so far for a spot of astrophotography during a full moon was the first time. But Stan's been playing around with his camera and he's standing in front of the camera at the moment and taking weird shots of him in there. It's pretty awesome. It's cool. God, Stan, I fucking hate it. Yeah, it is. <laughs> and he also tagged along with me for a stretch of the southwest coast path which obliterated it. I knew it was going to be a little bit strenuous, but that last couple of hours was, it was intense. Harsh steps, heat bugs, lack of water, downed all my water. Tipped it over your head. Regardless, he returned for a camp up on Great Mist Tour. He bought a massive backpack and I supplied the tents. With Stan, as with Naif, there was a great deal of the banter between us that old friends harbour so well. Yeah, Stan, what's up for you? I found it hanging in a tree, Stan. Oh, did you? It's one of my flapjacks. Oh, yeah. Don't taste like dog shit at all. <laughs> it proved to be a peaceful camp, some idyllic views, great weather, and one of the greatest sunsets I had ever witnessed. And towards the end of the summer, I was even joined by my son for a wild camp up on Dartmoor. Summit on a bike. Next generation. It's rare that my children show any interest in my adventures, and so the fact that he'd asked to come with me was a highlight of my year. Dad? Yeah? I need a poo. You're joking. Yeah. <laughs> we bought him some hiking boots, packed him a rucksack and then took the lantern up to Great Staple Tour for a night under the stars. We were joined in the morning by some inquisitive Dartmoor ponies. Watch out, money, gonna eat you. Before heading back to the car beneath the arch of a rainbow. However, the collaborations wouldn't end there, but we'll come back to them shortly. But it wasn't all camping on Dartmoor. I was still plugging through the southwest coast path, and this year I had managed to close off the gaps and gain some considerable distance along this awesome coastline. I have completed the sections of North Cornwall, North Devon, Somerset, passing through locations such as Woolacombe, Ilfracombe and Coombe Martin. I edged further south through Cornwall, from Portreef to St Ives, onto Land's End and beyond, passing some of the most beautiful yet remote and strenuous sections of the coast path. I pushed on with the South Devon coastline too, tackling some more urban sections, places like Paynton, Torquay, Timmouth, Dawlish, Exmouth, reaching as far as Sidmouth. Oh, and I did manage to get out for a couple of days of hiking on the Jurassic Coast too. Five, four, three, two, one, go, Team Macmillan! Since my eldest brother moved to the Portsmouth area on the south coast, we don't see as much of each other as we once did. So when I saw an advert for the Macmillan's Jurassic Coast Mighty Hike, located directly between the pair of us, I thought it would be a great excuse to spend some quality time together, whilst ticking off more of the coast path and raising money for a noble cause all at the same time. And so, in preparation, we set off to the Isle of Portland for a day of training. It was a stunning area and the perfect weather for it. The Isle of Portland was a dry and arid coastline, industrial yet creative with climbing hotspots, monumental landmarks and historical buildings. It was a great walk which tested us both, but did gear us up for the upcoming fundraiser. The day of the Jurassic Coast mighty hike arrived and unfortunately the weather was far from ideal. We got battered by high winds and slanty sideways rain. The rain running off the hills made some of the steep descents particularly dodgy. It's quite greasy underfoot as well because it's been raining. <laughs> Easier to slide down it, I think. As we passed the iconic Durdle door, the grim weather seemed at its height. However, it did change for better for the afternoon. By the finish line, I was ready to drop. My brother, however, seemed to find a second wind as we entered the finishing paddock and ran across the finish line. Rob Lewis, charging across. He's left Trev Lewis for dead. His official videographer for his moment of glory. Between us, we had raised over 1,000 for Macmillan, and it soon appeared that I would not be stopping my fundraising there. I signed up for the amazing hospice care trek through Nepal, which seemed like a once in a lifetime kind of deal that I couldn't resist. To enter, I paid £350 up front and then faced the challenge of raising an additional £3,500 by September 2020. Let's 
I began to organise some guided walks for the cause and was absolutely taken back by the amount of support from my fantastic followers. So over 20 people have joined me today. We've raised nearly £300 just for this event. But if you want to donate some money, I'll put a link below to the Just Giving page anyway. It was amazing to be able to finally meet them and take them for a trek across Dartmoor. For the first walk, a fairly easy walk at Bellstone, I was even joined by another one of my siblings, my brother Robin, who took charge of my second camera and managed to speak to practically everyone there. What do you, what do you make of the um, fundraising bit he's up to? Fantastic, yeah, brilliant. That is, he's given up his own time to do something like that. That's, that's really good. That's what I meant. <laughs> <laughs> it's nice to see someone that's um, enjoying it for what it is and doesn't know everything and um, doesn't profess to know everything. Okay, I'm Rob. This Hi, is Liza. We're from the Isle of Wight. All right, good. And is there a, a message you want to give to Trev so to directly? Maybe well, then we need to catch up. Nice. <laughs> the success of the first walk was astounding and so it wasn't long before I set up yet another walk. And as we roll into 2020, I am over 54% of the way to reaching my target. Please check below for details of how to donate through my Just Giving page. I managed a few extra trips to Dartmoor for some solo camping before it dawned on me that the channel was becoming a little too Dartmoor based. I needed to get back to the crux of the channel and steer it back to the mountains. I arranged two collaborations into faraway locations. The first, a trip to the lakes in the company of Alan Metalman. I knew if we kept these sunglasses on long enough, we'll get some sun. Yeah, it's tropical now. I'd watched Alan's channel for a good few years, and during his videos set in and around the stunning Lake District, Alan possessed an enthusiasm and appreciation for the outdoors that I always found uplifting. He was a great host and enjoyable company. It was as though we were meeting as old friends, having been so familiar with each other's videos. There's really no awkwardness, it's just been straight in, straight up, yeah. and just rub it, rub it, rub it all the way up, it's been great. He showed me Helvellyn, a mountain I was keen to visit, and although I chickened out from taking stride in edge, Alan led me on a beautiful circular route. And then, early that evening, we made our way to Easdale Tarn, a picture-perfect spot for a wild camp. Besides the glassy water and beneath the towering mountains, this tranquil spot was like a painting on a postcard. If you ignored the appalling mess left by some yobs with obvious disregard for the code of conduct most of us wild campers abide by. What a shame. It's dumped stuff. You know, bottles everywhere, rubbish. What part of leave no trace do people not understand, dickheads? The trip was rounded off by a brief climb up to Hallam Fell, where we enjoyed breathtaking views of Oldswater. Later in the year, I also met up with another YouTuber, Joss, whose channel is based in and around Snowdonia. His videos are something special, well crafted and informative. This is a row of houses that workers of the quarry used to be working out, so they'd literally get one each. Very small rooms, really, probably have all the family in there as well, you know fantastic exploration of the beautiful landscape with someone who loves and respects his surroundings. He took me up to the summit of Mol Shabod via a fun scramble. Hopefully it's not too hairy. You all know how I feel about ridges. A bit nervous of them. Right, so I have no need to worry if, you, if you're feeling a bit nervous because uh, two of my friends from the uh, climbing club that I used to be in are uh, this side of the Valley's Mountain Rescue Team. Oh, yeah, that's handy to know. And the day was a great adventure, albeit a little hindered by strong winds. We dipped back down into the valley where we set up camp and he treated me to a splendid homemade curry. Well there's tea, we've got naan, we've got curry rice and a pot of mango chutney. Spoiled! I also managed to return this year to the Brecon Beacons, accompanied by some friends from work. Out of these misfits again, all lads I know from work. And I met Den, Sean over there, Frank. We first visited the Four Waterfall Walk, a scenic and somewhat strenuous walk through the spectacular Welsh Valley. But it was our trek along the Penny Fan Horseshoe that was the highlight of this adventure. We climbed to the top in thick mist, which broke away just as we reached the top. Right. 
and we retreated to some spectacular views above the clouds before setting up for another wild camp in the dip between Cribbin and Penny Fan. It was during this trip, however, that we planned what would become a game changer for Summit or Nothing. The first ever international trip. Trevor, Summit or Nothing, international winter hiking in Romania. Vampire and bear hunting. Oh yes, grizzlies. In late October, we journeyed to the Romanian Carpathians for our most memorable adventure yet. We spent three days exploring this awesome landscape. It was the start of their winter, so we were blessed with some spectacular views, as well as sub-zero temperatures. We trekked through mountainside forests, home to bears, lynx and wolves. We spent the night in a mountainside cabana, scrambled up a near vertical chimney and finally summited the awesome Omu Peak, a staggering 2,507 metres high. We visited a seven ladder canyon, explored an ice cave, summited yet another mountain, Piatra Mare, at over 1,600 metres and ate at another cabana. It was a great trip and a great way to round off a fantastic year. So that was my 2019. I would love to hear from you guys in the comments below as to what was your favourite video. I would like to thank each and every one of you for your continued support and I hope that our channel encourages you to get out there and explore some of these amazing locations yourselves. So until next time, arrivederci YouTube.